imagine if you go to a gated football game and they're required to show the vaccine proof. It's in Florida, man. It's not gonna happen. I'm just saying, no, it could happen in school. Actually, you'd be surprised. School could happen. For school can enforce whatever you want. But it's safe to the students. It's not gonna happen. There's gonna be I'm a saying. lot of boosters who are gonna be like, no, nah, I didn't get the vaccine. I'm not gonna show you anything. I'm gonna take my funding away. Oh, that's true. Uh, money, money so talks what are you gonna do? <laughs> then be like, all right, all right. You know what? Money talks. That's you know true. what? We're just joking. We're just joshing. <laughs> JK, JK, JK. JK. <laughs> Hey there, welcome to the Gluten-Free Organic Thoughts Podcast, where you are encouraged to express your natural thoughts and views through casual, meaningful conversations that hopefully can lead to learning and understanding new perspectives. To find out more info, visit www.gfothoughts.com. Now, here are your hosts, Michael Wong and Robert Din. We hope you enjoy this episode. Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome back to another great episode of Gluten Free Organic Thought Podcast. My name is Michael. I'm one of your co hosts, always with me, Robert Day. Hey, welcome back. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, we're going to have an exciting episode today about COVID again <laughs> or COVID related <laughs> issues. But there's it's some... COVID related issue. Okay. It's yeah. a bit more excited because now we're actually testing theories now, you know, yeah. to see where it goes. We're going to see but how be- it goes. Yeah. Before we get started, so what are you drinking today, Robert? I uh, I have a special drink today. Uh, my building is having a flamenco night, and wait, they... hang on, hang on. Time, time out. What is a flamenco night? First of all, flamenco like the, the dance. Dance. Yeah. Oh, okay, got it. I thought people were just dressing suits, flamenco suits. You know, who knows? No, I think I. <laughs> they have like flamenco, like they have a band it... coming to do. Flamenco oh, the music. The music. Yeah, oh yeah, shit! Yeah. And then I think they have dancers coming too, but I didn't go down there. It's uh, it's like right now, so. It's while we're talking. Wait, you're missing the flamingo dances while we're talking? Yeah, I, that's how committed I am to the podcast. Damn, All man. Right? I will not miss flamingo dances, you know? Yeah, but uh, <laughs> along with it, they are providing us with sangria. Drinks. So Ooh. I got a free glass of sangria. That's what we're drinking today. There we go. So you just pretty much you got the booze on your bell. Mm-hmm. I see how it is. <laughs> yep, that's how it works. All right, well, I am sticking to my healthy drink today, and... I am having this. Uh, can you see the color? Let me see. Yeah, it looks nah. brown. It is brownish, lightish, I guess you can say. Yeah. So it's like this ginger honey. I'm not sure you see the chunk. Can you see the chunks? No. Oh. You got to turn off the, your, your, My blurry your sign. blur. There you go. Oh, there you go. You see the chunks? Now, you see the chunks Ew, there? What is that? Those, those are ginger chunks. So, so what ended up happening is that this crazy, whoever invented this is smart as hell. So they crystallize honey into a block mm-hmm. with a bunch of ginger chunk in it, right? Mm-hmm. And they wrapped it. And then in order, and then pretty much you pour hot water in it, it becomes honey ginger tea. So like the honey melts with the hot water tea. So it's smart. It's ingenious. If you think about it. It's like crystallized honey chunk. This, like this thick, this big. And then you just put it in it. You put hot water in it. You get honey ginger tea. And it's super strong, real ginger. So like, it, the honey preserves the ginger for a long period of time. So who knows how long it lasts. But let me tell you, it's honey and ginger berry taste. It's very powerful. How long uh, are those do those blocks, uh, how long are they good for? When you buy well, them, the, is there expir- expiration date? There's expiration date. It says 2025. I bought it like maybe like four months ago. And I've been using like a so block. Like three years? Um, yeah, three, yeah. four years, I guess. I mean, it makes sense to honey being crystallized and preserved stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that yeah. makes sense. And then uh, how much is for one of those? How much is it? So it's a Chinese store, right? So it's pretty cheap. So a box will cost like six dollars. It has about twenty four of them in it. Okay, yeah. nice. Yeah, good luck trying to find find that whole food. So yeah. yeah, they don't they don't sell that stuff, huh? But it's ingenious though, right? They crystallize honey, and it's it's such a smart way to do it. I'm like honey hardens already, no matter what. If you can crystallize it and maintain that structure and keep the the ginger fresh. Yeah, so they just like mix ginger into it and then they crystallize it. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Anyway. Genius, except he's selling it for $6 a, a thing. Yeah, and I know, right? He, he, could selling, <laughs> he could be selling a whole soup for $10. Yeah. It's, <laughs> he sell it for a whole food for like one of those blocks for like $3 and then <laughs> they'd be no, making seriously. bank. <laughs> Right idea. There we go. I'm gonna do there that. There we go. <laughs> you could you could just take it from the Chinese store and bring it to Whole Foods and then resell it. <laughs> or I can just I, or I can just sell it in the street in a, in a cold on a cold night. Yeah, ginger, hot ginger tea. 
Yeah, four bucks a cup. That's it. Seems like a lot more work, Mike. Seems like a lot more work. Yeah, go. True. You gotta be distributor, be in the millions. That's true. <laughs> All right, so let's get into today's episode. So, one of the reasons driver we decided to talk about this topic today is that there are, we have been seeing you know a couple of cities implementing some, uh, I guess, vaccinated uh, vaccine vaccine laws requirement for indoors, and so I think New York City did that, and so did San Francisco recently. Yeah, so so these cities have required for you to show proof that you have been vaccinated to be able to sit indoors and enjoy. And like, so like it's like not only just or events, gym. gyms, or gyms. Yeah. yeah, anything indoor related, you're gonna need to show that you have been vaccinated. Yeah. So f- the I guess the caveat to that is that a lot of this law says that it's not gonna be enforced by police. Mm-hmm. So that means it fall it will fall under I guess the business to enforce that himself. Mm-hmm. So it just get, now gives the right to the business. It's a, hey, it's a law now. Yeah. So now, right. now, like, for example, my brother, when COVID was uh, first starting, or like last summer, right? During COVID, he put up a sign in his nail salon that said like, no, no mask, no service, right? Yeah. And people got so mad. He's in Florida. So people yeah. just got mad and were arguing with him. Yeah. Uh, and if this was a law or something like this, was a law he could have been like no that's the law you have to do it i have the right yeah. to do it whereas before like that time everyone was just like argues with him until the point where he had to just take it down because he was taking too much time to argue with yeah. them it's just, it just there was too much time and energy wasting it for that yeah effort. yeah okay so now i guess with small bit so let's talk about the question that we're trying to answer today right so the question i think we're trying to answer is that will a vaccine pass implementation like this impact the current COVID situation and so, how and why, and if not, how and why as well, right? Mm-hmm. So, I guess from the positive side of things, let's just talk about, yes, we, we, we do think that it could impact the COVID situation where it gives the business now the power to enforce something, but before they couldn't, in a sense. It's, I don't know, if, I don't know if it's even that they couldn't, it's like people pushed back so much, like... On it. You think there'll be less pushback now? I think so. There okay. would be. Uh, I well, I don't know. The cities that it's implemented in, New York and San Francisco, are already yeah. very strict on their, um, on their containment, okay. right? So they're doing a lot, a lot more than some of the other cities that, or some of the other states and stuff that that are anti. COVID, okay. like regulations and stuff, right? So, so like I, I feel like. Nowadays, if I went to a restaurant in San Francisco and they had asked me to provide my COVID vaccine ID or something, yep. I wouldn't have been, uh, I wouldn't have said that that was a problem because yeah. it's just like San Francisco. So they're so conscious of it. Um, but I, like now they're like making it a law. So then you have to get your ids and stuff ready whereas before if they asked for it that we didn't have it like i don't have you don't, don't carry have, that with I you all the time with right? me that all the time right yeah me neither yeah so now and they're, wearing tear, they're wearing the tear those cards they can, they can fade away so easily then what then what you're gonna get another vaccine shot no no they have mm-hmm. the things where you can log into oh California digital now and gotcha. and then they they have all the records there so i just had to get that id the onto bar my, the bar probably the barcode right onto my phone yeah just had to like, like Hawaii has this pack part codes now too, mm-hmm. you know. So like you just log in, it's like the travel passport in a sense. Just log in, show the barcode. So you do. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's what I had to do. But like before, if they hadn't, if they had just asked me, I would have been like, I don't have my, I don't have my stuff. Yeah. I don't know. I I'm vaccinated, but I don't have any proof because I don't carry that around, right? Gotcha. So yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I think I think in these cities, like it's more acceptable, and people will do it more, and and it'll. <clears throat> I mean, it won't be an issue. Whereas if you implemented this in like a Georgia or yeah. Texas or Florida, like it would have a lot more pushback on it. Than... So you're talking about from a customer standpoint, right? From a client standpoint, yeah. Okay. So now let me ask you this. Do you think businesses or gyms are happy about this in those cities, San Francisco, New York City? I don't think they... Overall, like, I mean, like, yeah. I think this, I think there may be a pushback from the cities, to be honest, too, though. I mean, from the, from the businesses in those... Cities because I feel like it's only going to be the ones that are tourist related. 
right? Because tourists uh, are gonna come and they're not gonna have all that stuff. But that's like, true. It's gonna hurt them. A but like bit, yeah. the high end restaurants and stuff, or like the small businesses. Like I feel like small businesses here that are cut like catered to locals. Like yeah. they won't mind because I feel like they're already conscious enough where they wanted this to be implemented anyways, right? They wanted to ask, but they didn't know. Like they didn't know if they could, right? And that's that's really. Um, yeah, so, and one of the things is that I do, like you said, I think tourist businesses who's going to get impacted more are probably going to be, our, our, I guess, that even local gyms and stuff. So I know there, in New York City, there's a, there's a bunch of restaurants <clears throat> uh, that are suing the city itself for, for this new law. And they're trying to sue at least, they're trying to put together a team, right? And so, like, there's that article here that I'm going to send you. Uh, it's just uh, local restaurants, gyms, apparently, like, they're trying to get together to sue the city for this purpose, you know, it's just because now, I guess. But how can they sue them? Because it's on them to enforce it. So why would it even be an issue? No, I, I agree with you. That's, that's also why I'm trying to get to the argument, like in a sense, right? Like, like at the end of the day, it's up to the business to enforce it, right? Mm -hmm. And so for their, I guess, well, what is the, what's the, what's the ground for them to sue them? I don't know, to be honest with you. I, uh, I think that this a law doesn't start to, I mean, I think September 13th is going to be enforced. 13th, yeah. Yeah. And I think for them is that um, I, I don't know what ground they're going to sue for them for, but you're right. It is up to the business to enforce it in a sense. It's up to the business. So like, yeah, so it's on, <laughs> I don't even know what they can sue for. It's like, it's on you. If you don't want to do it, you don't have to do it. Like that's, it just gives the people who have the right to do it or who want to do it to ha that have the right to do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I honestly, I think that it's, I mean, another positive that I see, right, yeah. is that it gives the locals more comfort in, like, going out, right, and going out more. Whereas yeah. before, I might think twice about going to a restaurant if it's so crowded. Whereas if I knew everybody was vaccinated, I might be more likely to go and be more at ease. That's true. Yeah. So there's that psychological, uh, that's a psychological element to it too, where like you could just maybe, maybe it just feels it's more safe. It's like when that's I came true. back to Florida or yeah. when I came back to California from Florida and I came back and everybody in the airport was wearing a mask. I was like, oh, I feel so much safer. Hey, but you didn't catch COVID though. You're fine. So you're good. You're no, no, but I just feel safer <laughs> when everyone's wearing a mask. It, it, it's all like, Mental. It might not it's a lot of even do anything, but yeah. mentally, it's yeah. it's like it feels safer, right? No, no, it's it does give it that placebo effect, right? It's a hundred percent agree. Uh, it's it, it does give that I guess sense of I guess safety net for those people who are very more conscious about it. Mm -hmm. um, but also in the other side of the argument is that <clears throat> if a business enforces it, they may a lot of people may you know, for example, like if they try to do this, let's say that you know, like in Georgia, right, or Florida, like you said. A lot of if, if they these businesses try to do that, they may lose just a lot of business just try to get you know just walk away and they may not, yeah, you know, they may not support it, right? So yeah. you're and it will vary per area. I think with New York City as well, because it depends on the tourism situation, right? Because you're right, uh tourism that it's a heavy traffic tourist city and it, it will impact their business. So I'm yeah. gonna agree with that part. Uh now let me let's art let's talk about the other side. So I, I mean, partially in, in, in the other side of the argument that I don't think it can also progress. I guess it will, I guess the implementation may not help the situation because at the same time, uh, not everyone is, not, there's not enough places that will enforce it. You see what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. like majority area, let's say they try to do this in the Southeast, right? Let's be honest. How many cities in the Southeast will try to enforce this or even businesses trying to enforce this? So yes, it may give them that perceive, you know, that that right to do it doesn't mean anything, right? Yeah. So if no one, if no help. one actually enforces it, then it's yeah. not going to do anything. It's gonna yeah. like it's not really gonna help lower COVID cases over like right. all over the state yeah. or the the U.S. or yeah. the country or over worldwide. I guess, right now. I guess the goal of this is that it's supposed to encourage people to take vaccine. Part of it, but the other part of it is that. And it should encourage people to say, hey, you're okay to go out if you, there are certain places that will you know, make sure that the vaccinated people. So like, it's trying to please kind of both sides to a certain degree-ish. This is why like the, this enforcement is not really strongly there in a sense by the local government. It's just 
hey, you have a law, you guys can enforce it now. Yeah. So. I it just gives the businesses the right to yeah. do stuff. I also had a one of somebody reached out to me when I I posted about the uh the the San Francisco law going in yeah. and they were like they said that they had some uh medical issues that caused that so they couldn't get the vaccine. Okay. So they're like, what are we supposed to do? That's true. Yeah. My, yeah, my dad is going through some health situation and they're, they're telling him, don't go to the, get the vaccine until your health situation gets settled down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so what do those people do? Right. Like yeah. they're not allowed to be, uh, to go to the restaurants and go to the gym and do all this stuff. Like it's just, uh, it's, uh, is, is that, it's an issue. It's an issue, but, and also probably to be honest with you, they're probably like, maybe, you know, it's a small percentage and they're probably they're not worrying about that part of it. I mean, there should be also like a an exception, an exception, like a doctor's note is also valid. Yeah. Um, but but a lot of these restaurants they that have out that have indoor seating now also have outdoors, so it's not like you can't go to the restaurant. You just can't go inside. You just can't go inside. That's true. You can sit outside. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's just different for like, it's just different for like if you're going to like a concert concert perhaps. or go to the gym or something like you have to go to yeah. outdoor stuff and yeah. uh that you can't go to certain spots does certain baseball spots. game counts outdoor baseball game yeah i okay. think so or i don't know this a this, this game. the stadium here uh in san francisco is all outdoors like there's okay. so. because i know there's some stadium the closest dome like the south florida stadium i think they're, they do closer dome sometimes mm. when it rains no san francisco's has like a like the tampa bay the tampa bay is a dome so Mm. yeah so maybe yeah. yeah but but it's not in, it's not even like a law in florida yet yeah. so it's it's just san francisco and just uh new york right there's no more uh there are other cities in, in talks right now i believe um i feel I like portland would be one of the first ones to do it they haven't done anything yet there and actually i think portland is still uh survive uh going through their own chaos from <laughs> from the early last year situation so they're trying to recuperate from that part of it probably to be honest so oh california but, becomes the first state to require proof yeah mm -hmm. so the whole the, whole, the so. whole state not just and san then, francisco yeah correct yeah oh wow uh an or oh it says it says proof of covid vaccination or a negative test for indoor events over a thousand people Oh, okay. So you guys show so, the negative test within 48 hours, 24 hours? That's okay. That's Yeah, not, that's, that's not fair. bad at all. See, like, so that's like the people that's that can't a, that's, get the that's vaccine. That's flexibility. That's yeah, flexibility now. They can still get a test and still go to this stuff. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. So that's flexibility now, right? Mm -hmm. So, but now the question is, though, is should the business enforce that now? Because now there's a, now there's a flexibility there now. Mm hmm So... It's really on the owners if they care yeah. or not. Yeah. Um, because they have to protect their own employees, right? So, and and like restaurants are all, they all like I think most of most places, employees are all wearing masks anyway. They all wear masks. Yeah, I've, seen, no, I was, yeah. I've never seen a place that doesn't have masks. Yeah. Like I know shop, grocery shopping, uh, grocery centers too, grocery store, everybody's wearing masks still. Yeah. So like, so. it's only it's yeah it's not it's not anyone who works there. Yeah. It's just the 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 uh, <clears throat> be, and. and and let's be honest with you, like this, this whole vaccine passport, it's nothing new. Like you see this in kids for vaccine and, you know, for kindergarten kids and first graders, right? They all require a certain type of vaccines, a list of vaccines ready to go before you go to school. So that way you protect your kids and it's requirement like for the whole United States. Right. Mm -hmm. And the, and the thing is that we, these vaccine passport, I mean, like even every state by state, right. It has its own vaccine requirement, believe it or not. And so like here, I'll send you this link here. And like for kids, you're, you're, you're doing to protect the kids, but you're also protecting the parents because you don't know what kids will drag in to the house, right? Even now in days with all of this uh, vac uh, you know, vaccinated uh, kids and stuff like that, kids are still bringing germs to parents and parents get sick. So yeah, and kids, I, kids bring home all kinds of stuff. Everyone stuff, yeah. I know who's a parent is like sick all the time. Yeah. And so, like, having this vaccine passport shouldn't be a new thing in general. Like, it should, unless you're a parent, right? I mean, I mean sorry, unless you're not a parent, maybe it's not a new thing. But, like, 
I remember going like I remember going to any other Asian country, like how you make sure you have your yellow fever shot, whatever it is, tuberculosis shots and things like that before you go enter there. Mm -hmm. And so it's to protect yourself at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. But uh, but we're obviously I'm not talking about COVID related, but I'm just talking about just in general, right? This yeah, whole yeah. the whole like saying passport. I just don't think that I just think it is a little bit overplayed because it's it shouldn't be a big deal. It's cool, yes, we should have a vaccine passport. And then I think at the end of the day, your medical record should show that regardless. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like your primary care should have all of that too. I mean, they do, right? They do have yeah. all that. So it shouldn't, like, like I said, it shouldn't be a hard thing like for them. You know? People also to talk about privacy, right? Like having yeah. uh, privacy and their medical history and stuff, which I'm not sure. How does it relate to each other in a sense? Yeah, I don't know if what kind of medical issues would you like. I don't know. There's there's some stuff like maybe STDs or something that would be embarrassing to to have out there. But like, ah, what? I'm glad you brought. I'm glad, I'm glad you brought this up because I'm gonna have, have a topic to bring this up in a sense. So, I remember Bill Gates back in last year and actually 2020 TED talk he did. Is it 2020 or 2019? He talked about the ID 2020 project, and so using. Uh, blockchain technology. Uh, what they want to do is just you, ma you mask the IDs, and you can still have those vaccine passports, those uh, blocked in it, so that way it protects the uh, the privacy. How? So, wait, how does this protect the privacy of? It's supposed to mask person? it. It's supposed to mask it, uh, and then not only that, it's supposed to be universal. Um, but you would still be carrying around your card. Yeah, but it will. Are, are you talking about more like? From being hacked, right? That's what you're talking about from that standpoint? No, no, no. People, I, I've heard people like argue that they don't want to be, they don't want, they don't want to tell people that if they're vaccinated, most of this, most of these people that aren't vaccinated, right? Yeah. And you ask them, are you vaccinated? And they say, that's a private issue. That is a personal, private medical issue. And they don't want to discuss it, right? Which I'm not sure how this is something that needs well, that privacy, right? And I don't, I don't really know what medical issues would would have a sen have a sensitive enough subject where you wouldn't be providing that information. I, actually, you're bringing up a good point right now. Also, from a social standpoint, like not being vaccinated, being vaccinated is kind of a social standpoint too, right? Because there are certain people who look down upon people. Hey, you're not vaccinated. You know, you're not gonna hang out with us in sense. Or versus. You're vaccinated, you know. Okay, cool. You know, you just follow the people, whatever. That's like, like it's a social, I guess, stigma to a certain degree, almost now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if you noticed it's that. Been, noticed it's that. been very political. That's why it's been yeah. very politic politicized, and so like each side has their own opinion of of people who are or aren't vaccinated. Yeah, I mean, I remember last year when we did our Joshua Tree. I said I didn't care if you're vaccinated or not. I said like, just show me your negative COVID test. You, just, you can just come, right? There was and... no vaccinations though at that point. We couldn't get vaccinated. When did COVID? Uh, when, did, when did we go to the trip? September, right? Yeah, September ish. But like we, like I couldn't get. Oh yeah, I, we could not get vaccinated. Couldn't, couldn't get, get vaccinated. vaccinated. Yeah, so we all just took, yeah. we all just took COVID tests. But yeah. yeah, that's. But I'm still okay with that right now, though. If you come to let's say I have a product to me, you show me your COVID test. I'm okay. I don't even don't care vaccinated or not. I, at least my personal thought in a sense, right? Show me your negative COVID test to have the flexibility. But, but Mike, like that's a yeah. personal private. Correct. Medical issue that I don't want to be telling you if I'm have COVID or not. You see, like yeah, where, then, where uh, what, where's the line there? Like I, I guess I, I guess get now it. if you don't want to tell me then I wouldn't want you to come to my event because I want you to affect everybody around me. Then. Right. Yeah. Now you're now you're ostracizing me for 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 well, having the privacy that. of my own medical records. Yeah, see, but no, uh, I. But, I don't get. I I don't know. I'm just making. I'm just playing devil's advocate. But, but 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 there is a fine line. I get that. I 100 percent agree with you on that part. But if you're coming to my house, and I'm 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 exposing you to people, it's my responsibility to make sure people are safe, though, right? Yeah. No, I and get so, it. So so. It's but, just but like that person, I don't. But that person understand. should be understanding, though. I just don't understand, right? Like yeah, it's not that we can't, big we of a can't. deal. I mean, listen, I have, I hang out with friends who have COVID already. I mean, I've hung out with people who has, who has, has not COVID yet, whatever it is. But at the end of the day, I feel like we cannot treat this in a sense that, I mean, people, I, I get the privacy situation, 
but whether you have the COVID, Can you explain or you have... to me the privacy situation. Like, what, what kind of privacy are they? Do they have an issue with? Like, well, I don't, I don't. Understand. They don't. They, they don't really have an issue with the privacy situation. They're more like it's more about the social stigma about it. That's the, that's the the key part. So this is why that's just why they rather not tell. Okay, so for example, right? If you ask, most people won't tell you they had COVID unless you already asked them in a sense, right? Like, hey, have you ever had COVID before, right? In a sense, like they wouldn't come up in a conversation. Hey, listen, I already had COVID before, blah, blah, blah. You know, uh, all this stuff, all the things like, like, because of this social stigma. I don't think, no one's going to go out and tell you, right, no. straight up, like, oh, I've had, I've had COVID. But like, if you ask them, they'll, they'll tell you, or like, they maybe they won't. But like, I, yeah. there's no stigma if you've had it. There's stigma if you haven't had the vaccine, because it's... Uh, well, that's part of this part, of That's yeah. pol pol political, right? right? Yeah. But yeah, I, I don't know, like, it's... It shouldn't be as political as it is. It should be. Yeah, I agree. And it's like, I don't know. I've like you ask people if they've had the flu shot, right? And they'll tell you yes or no. There's oh, no course. stigma there, right? Like, I don't think yeah. this should be something that's stigmatized like that. I 100% agree on that part. And this is why it goes back to my original talk uh, point of this conversation was that, you know, how kids had those like seen passports for, to go to kindergarten school or like that. I don't think this should be a big deal because we already seen this happening already at that level. I have a question for you too, Mike. Yeah. I remember when we first talked about COVID and all this stuff. I think Sean was on and yeah. you were talking about uh, COVID passports or whatever. Yeah. And, and you were staunchly against having a passport to say that if you had the vaccine or not. You were very much against it. Are you still on that train? Well, let's rephrase, let's recap the episode for a little bit better. So, during that time when we were talking about it, we were more about uh, the question was more like, "Hey, will you, will you think uh, we should all have required passport to show the vaccine in a sense, right? And make it vaccine, making vaccine required." That was no, that it was, was, that was a top. Should we have? It, it's not about that. It's about if if we should have a passport that tells you if you're vaccinated or not. Yeah. So for me, I still kind of stands in a sense that, in a sense that. I don't think that there should be a passport for all the vaccinations if it's not required. If, it, if, if nobody makes it required, right, across the United States, it's not standardized across the board. I don't think it should be required. But if everybody said, you know, from a fair law, law level, right, just like there is all 50 states for kids in school, right? Hey, hey, this is the minimum requirement for vaccines for your kids to allow to go to school, federal law, flat out, right? Then, I mean, I'm, I'll be, I'm okay with it because now you stand right across board everything now. Okay. But the things that the where do you draw the fine line that of that piece, right? So again, we just gotta be careful with the whole demographic situation where we're like, let's say that with the with the COVID vaccine now, right? The boosters come is coming up next year, mm -hmm. right? Now, are we forced to get the booster as well? Is that required going forward every, every year? So why not the flu shots at that point? What what is it? Where do we draw the line right now, right? To kind of so form build the on mark to make it required? Like nothing's yeah. required, man. Like. You yeah. don't even, you're not even required to get the COVID vaccine. So it's no. not like... Uh, no, no, I, I get it. But right now it's not though, right? But there are certain schools that require certain vaccines to go to kids, right? I'm just saying like, I'm just drawing, I'm just drawing like an example. But like, if we're going to have the passport required, then what is the point of having a passport required if nobody's going to use it? You know what I'm saying? But so. certain states are going to use it, right? Yeah. So something like Hawaii is going to require it. Where yeah, they, oh, they require listen, it. I'm so not against it. I'm not why, against that. Like... If they if they require it, like it doesn't have to be a federal requirement. I think a state requirement's fine. I think a city requirement is fine. It's just like just have someone enforcing it. Cause right now so, we don't have anyone enforcing it. My my issue was that it was because it was also forcing the vaccine to be required. That was why I was kinda against that a little bit. Yeah, you're you're you were, you were against yeah. ha forcing to be vaccinated to travel. <laughs> required to be travel, yeah, correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so to answer your question, like I'm going to, we're going to Hawaii, right? I don't care. I'm filling out that paper out, you know, because we're going to their state. I don't, otherwise I don't want to be quarantined for like 10 days. It's a waste of my time. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I'll fill that out. I'm not against that at all. And if every, if, like I said, if, if they standardize across board everything, imagine that you fill out one account instead of 50 accounts where we say you travel to. 
now I may have to fill out, I may have to fill out California one. I go back to visit California or I have to fill out New York one. I have to fill out Georgia one. Every state's going to have their own thing. It gets tedious. Let's be honest. You're going to have 15 sites, 50 different sites to go into 50 different accounts. I don't think that's how it is, man. I think I'm, I'm just saying, one, I mean, if you have one, then it works for all because if it you, may not, it may you, not. I, how can I mean, it not be? Because it's like you said, it's a state or city level. No, but if they see another city's another city or another state's vaccination, how can they not be able to be okay with that? But you still gotta register that to the you know open you know move your make sure your data has to get passed you know through that account. Make sure this is legit. No one is. Like, Are you signing that. up for something? I don't know what you're signing up for. So like literally, you know, how- literally, my California ID was just me. Yeah going into my medical records and downloading it and that was it there was nothing else so i'm just saying in general right if you think about this like for example like hawaii is making people sign up to the form right to make sure they get registered show the proof right yeah if every single state start doing that there are different diff- different systems that's going to do that and every every it may be at control at a state level right what i was saying earlier that imagine if you just have a federal level one federal site everybody could use the same exact site you do it once make yeah it but proof. if if it's not then it's the government, thing. right? They do yeah. whatever the fuck they want. They're, yeah, they're as the most inefficient system ever. <laughs> so if if there is 50 different ones, then it's 50 different ones. There's not much you can do about it. And that's annoying. Even, that even, even what is it? Obamacare is like you fill it out and it sucks, right? Like well, you, every state you go to is different. Yeah, I mean, but it's still one site though. Yes, every day you go fill out, but it's, it, it'll trigger down to different sites. I, I get, I get what you're saying, but it's just, yeah, I don't know. It, it, it is, it's annoying at the end of the day, right? So it's not like I'm not against it or for it in a sense for me, um, but I just want to make sure that if we do something, let's do it right, let's use it and not have asset. I to think, have it. I think the lack of enforcement is, um, is is troubling, right? Like, like why even pass it if there's no one that's gonna. I think it's just it? like I think like you mentioned before, right? It gives the the businesses and those with the flexibility to make it to enforce it themselves. They have to. Yeah, I get it, but like that's this is literally gonna do nothing to help the COVID situation, COVID situation because there's no enforcement. So I know okay. we can't do Actually, it here in San Francisco because we can't even enforce like regular <laughs> laws, right? Like people go into Walgreens and steal stuff and they walk out with the police officer standing right there. They can't really? do anything, right? Wait, so, wait, why do the cops wait, why do the cops can't do anything? Why is that? Because there's like a nine hundred dollar limit on like no, the, like can, the minimum if, amount, like they, if they steal minimum amount of nine hundred. If they, they steal can. less than nine hundred dollars, they they can't be <laughs> prosecuted they, or like you can't what is it is called? It, is, is it cost taxpayer more money to prosecute and put in jail yeah i think so something like that but they like probably waited, they probably waited out benefit costs <laughs> yeah yeah and they're like yeah if it's under 900 dollars, <laughs> we're not even gonna charge you because it's not even worth putting you through the system it's not even worth pursuing the most yeah hours. so people are just walking in and steal like walgreens has a lot of stuff that you can get for under nine hundred dollars. Right? Like, <laughs> there's a ton of stuff you can get. So people going Dude, in and like so filling crazy. up backpacks yeah. and stuff, and like walking out, and they can't. Insurance you stay under eight hundred ninety nine dollars. <laughs> yeah, I think there's like it's like a backpack. It's almost impossible to fill up a backpack with nine hundred dollars worth of stuff. So the, the clerks can't stop them. No, like why would you stop them? It's like not their like it's not their store like. That those guys could have like guns ah, or knives so, and stuff. Like, that's you don't so crazy. Be involved with that stuff. And the cops don't do anything. Damn. Yeah, I think it's only like if you if you own like a Seven Eleven and it's like your own personal Seven Eleven, like maybe those guys will fight against these these robbers. But like if you work at Walgreens, that's not your store. Like yeah, yeah, it's nah. it's not worth it. You're getting paid. It's not minimum worth it. Fifteen thousand hours. <laughs> yeah, you're getting paid minimum wage. There's no there's no real. Uh, benefit for you to do Dude, that. that 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 is nuts though i didn't yeah. know the 900 other so like they can't even enforce that so how are they gonna enforce like every well, restaurant in the city right so to let's go back to the original question of this podcast right so you're saying that it's not gonna help the situation at all the impact the situation i don't think it will like i don't think it will uh help lower the cases of covid but i think it will make it will help normalize going out uh, going out okay yeah a, it is a step forward to start like yes to be honest you think about it yeah okay that's a good way to put that i do think that it will not help the cases of covid 
but it will give some people a second thought about getting vaccinated. And not only that, I do think- Second thought, help. like, or like- Like, oh, I, now I need to go get vaccinated. Otherwise, it'll be more oh, tears. It might, wow. it might push them to get vaccinated. Yeah. Or uh, also at the same time, it may also- um, so like it may also like you said normalize it allows people to feel a little bit more safe for those people who are more health conscious. I saw you know about it, so they may come out more. I don't know what the percentage of that versus the ones who don't care. Uh, but like you said, in, as soon as that you know, I think to a certain degree, uh, certain states going to push their own public flexibility law. They see after one after another. Like for example, you can see Philly doing that easily. You can see Chicago, Illinois doing that easily. You know, you can see DC doing that easily. So mm -hmm. like a major cities. Yeah. It's probably a good idea in major cities, anyways. Yeah. So uh, let me let's side note this for a second. So you know how in Florida there has been a talk about schools and mandating masks in a sense, right? Yeah. So do you think, uh, uh in a sense, like from a high level perspective, from a, from a from a Florida uh, state level perspective, do you think that the schools should have the control of doing that, or should the state be doing something like that, or by county? To enforce, I don't think the state should be, uh, should be pushing that it shouldn't have mass, right? Like I, I think, oh, I like think they required. shouldn't. They, like I don't required. think they should negate all of the okay. mass stuff. So like, I feel like they should have the option. But if if they're gonna go one way, they should push towards mask or be more safe rather yeah. than be less safe, right? Like, and, I, and then and, and then punishing schools for enforcing it potentially punishing people for not doing it right like that's the problem i have i don't have a problem with like maybe De desantis like doesn't believe in it right i don't of course i don't like it, it's it's whatever his thoughts so, are but him saying like if you mandate it i'm gonna like they're gonna prosecute people is like that seems too much right like that okay. seems like you so, so the schools should have the flexibility to do that i think, I think so because okay. All of them, they 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 each have their own um, population density is different. Every school's yeah, different. Yeah, every school's different. Every yeah. every group, and then there's like private schools, right? Where private that's schools true. they have their own rules, like they can do whatever they want. They want, they, that's true. Yeah, and yeah. they have like their own like uh, belief sets that they that they have at those that's schools, true. so they should be able to enforce whatever they want. Yeah, I I, I was just wondering what your thoughts were behind that because I feel like I feel like. <clears throat> You know, I mean, obviously it's not related to like the vaccine passport, to, but at the same time, though, imagine that if you enforce the vaccine passport in Florida, how do you think Florida is going to react to that? No, they would hate it. They would, they would, they would not be down for that. Wait, wait, you talk, you talking about from a customer perspective or from a business perspective? I think even the businesses, if they said, if they, if they enforced it, yeah, people would be up in arms. Like, I feel like they would like, just, just like I said, my brother's shop, right? I feel yeah. like even if it was a law that said that he had that right, they yeah. would still be arguing with him over it. <laughs> I think I. What do you mean, oh, you mean so. the business tried to enforce that? You saying? Yeah, they started trying to enforce it because, because there's, like, what he was, what he told me, right? When he was like, "I put this mass sign up," it's nothing. It's not different than those those signs that say "No shirt, no shoes, no service." isn't i agree yeah right it's just it's whatever the business that's their policy right yeah. so he added up no mass no service and there and people was went off but like it's the same it's the same thing right yeah. but yeah so people would just start arguing over it and they they have their ideas and they they want to push back yeah. on it. 2021 man <sighs> yeah <laughs> all right so let's wrap this episode up okay so it sounds like your perspective again you don't think it's going to help the COVID situation count, but you think it will try to normalize the whole uh, going out thing. It mm -hmm. will help. Yeah. So my takeaway from this is that I agree with you. I don't think it will help the COVID count situation out, but I also think that the whole passport situation is, it will for sure give a sense of, I guess, mental safety in a sense for those people who need it. But also at the same time though, I, I'm really curious to see what happens with every single city or every single state that may or may not do it, especially in the Southeast. Yeah. I want to see how the impact of that. I want to see Alabama enforcing this, something like this. I want to see like Georgia doing something like this. Like, it's just hard to see that they do enforce it, right? It's just, like, okay. it's hard Even to in see. Texas, right? I can see Austin doing this. Austin as a city. Yeah. Yeah. It's possible. Yeah. So even Atlanta, I can see Atlanta doing this. 
that would be interesting to see a single city inside yeah. of a inside of a Republican Southeast. state. Yeah, just to see it. Uh, what how that all would work out. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of pushback in those states, so yeah. it's hard to see that they, it it would pan out. I, I'm just saying, like, because now where do you draw the line? Because now do you also you know, make sure that they had the booster shot is in the vaccine passport now too? Like, you know, and um, and then next year when it does happen. I don't think so. I think, honestly, I think, like, mm -hmm. any vaccine shot is better than nothing. nothing. So yeah. then, like, even the people who have gotten the vac uh, gotten COVID with the vaccine, yep. their symptoms are way less. Like, they, no, there's been... I don't know if there has been any hospitalizations. It's probably very low. It's, it's probably less. Yeah, yeah it's probably sure. way lower, yeah. right? So yeah. I think that they're probably just like, you know what? Even if these people get COVID, they're okay, right? Like yeah. it, like that risk of them getting it in this big, bigger space or with more people around, um, it's not going to be as effective. Imagine, listen, listen. Imagine if you go to a Gator football game and they're required to show the vaccine proof. It's in Florida, man. It's not gonna happen. I'm just saying, no, it could happen in school. Actually, you'd be surprised. School could happen. In full school can enforce whatever they want. But it's safe to the students. It's not gonna happen. There's gonna be I'm a saying. lot of boosters who are gonna be like, nah, I didn't get the vaccine. I'm not gonna show you anything. I'm gonna take my funding away. Oh, that's true. Uh, money, money so talks what are you gonna do? <laughs> then <they're just> gonna, <laughs> all right, all right. You know what? Money talks. That's you know true. what? We're just joking. We're just joshing. <laughs> JK, JK, JK. JK. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So let's do this on to our funny epi uh, section of the, uh, of the podcast, extra MEG session. So what do you have for us today, Robert? Okay, let me show you this uh, picture that I found. Mm -hmm. This exactly exemplifies my flossing routine every year. Your right? flossing? It says yearly flossing calendar, <laughs> right? Uh, the red here, for anyone looking, like not, not looking, there's like three <laughs> different, there's a whole calendar here. There's red, which is I have a dentist appointment, yellow, which is I floss, and green is I do not floss. And it shows every day is green, except maybe one day in February, randomly, Why is that it one says day? yellow, I floss. And then there's a dentist appointment, and the week before the dentist appointment, it's I floss every single day before that. That sounds like exactly like how I do my dental That is hilarious. Because you know that yellow in the middle there is like, you know what? I should start flossing. Or like you have a conversation with somebody and you're like, you know what? You're right. I should start flossing. So you do it for one day and then you forget going forward. All right. Speaking of flossing, I picked up a flossing habit five years ago, by the way. So what what flossing? Like you just floss I never every flossed day. before. Was it five years ago? And now you floss every day? I floss every day now. Mm -hmm. Wow. It makes a difference. That's 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 pretty yeah. good, Mike. Yeah. This is this is actually mine. Like <laughs> I'm showing you my flossing routine. And my mom's a dental assistant, right? So she's, <laughs> your mom's very proud of you, let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, she's gonna listen to this and be like, Oh my god, Robert, my what son. are you doing? This is my son. So uh, so I do I mean we're not encouraging people not to floss, first of all. But second of all, but <laughs> <laughs> second of all, you should you should try to floss. It does make a difference from my personal, you know, from my personal experience. Um, but I do think though it's kind of funny because that habit thing, like for example, you know that you you go into the dentist like in a week, so you want to make sure you don't eat sweets at night times or anything like that, or you want to make sure you brush extra eggs carefully. Like I do that too, like before I go to the dentist, like a week before going to the dentist. Yeah, you gotta make sure you go in there, you don't embarrass <laughs> yourself. Like you a... you rinse morning, you rinse at night time. You you know yeah. you do your <laughs> your water picks. The difference stuff. between mine is is that I have at least two dentist appointments throughout the year, so I do go every Actually, six months to get a uh, get a cleaning. Oh no, so yeah, I get my quarterly clean. I have once every three months. Quarterly cleaning, Mike. Mm -hmm. You're, you're a a, a dental all star. I had to be, you know. So I I never. So I had I only got a, one cavity my entire life, um. And then five years ago, they told me my gums were receding for some reason. But even though there was nothing wrong with it, mm -hmm. they're like, hey, you may want to think about flossing and think about um what's called coming to quarterly cleaning. So we, that way we can make sure that your pockets are closed. You don't have any bacteria, nothing, no cavity at all, but you, they're big pockets. That's what they're saying. Yeah. In order for in order for your gums to just kind of close themselves up, you need to make sure you get rid of bacteria consistently. So now my gums is better now. So it's, it's shown 
You do? Stuff. Do you do regular flossing or do you have like a water pick? I have both. I do regular flossing every night except for except for weekends, and then I do water picks on weekends. Wow, man, you really go all out. When I, when I travel, I do bring my water pick with me too, just in case. And it depends on the, it depends it depends on what I eat the night before, like the night off, right? If I'm eating like meat and steak, something I know stuff is gonna get stuck in my teeth. I want to put my wait. So you take water your pick. water pick with you everywhere you go? It's a small one, though. It's not the one of the big ones. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, it's not oh, one okay. of the big ones. Yeah, it's like you know, it's really easy to just bring the the little floss thing. It's not. It's I, very low space. Oh no, but I do have the floss thing too, also, just in case. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I I think I've only gotten um, I've only gotten cavities when I haven't gone to the dentist in a while. So when if I go every six months. I won't have any cavities. Yeah, uh, you get rid of your tarts and stuff. Yeah, right? I get Probably. it's like doing it consistently is definitely uh, the way to go. Going to the dentist and getting getting regular cleanings. Uh, but it's it's the times when I like didn't go to the dentist for like a year or like mm-hmm. two years or something, and then I'll I'll come out with with the cavities for sure. Yeah, I mean it's kind of nice to have the quarterly plan. I'm not gonna lie. So yeah, it's just you go to the dentist a lot. I don't know. I mean, it takes. I don't go. Stuff. I don't go to the dentist. I don't go. Or I don't like going to doctors or anyone too uh, too much. Yeah, yeah. I guess. <laughs> All right, moving on to my next topic. Um, so my topic, my yeah, what's topic, your funny thing? It's something stupid, but it's funny because, <clears throat> like, you don't pay attention, but sometimes this happens to the best of us when you create a sign. So, pretty much this uh, for those who are not watching is a uh, t- title. Sometimes. You just have to be careful repeating yourself. And it's a sign that says, we're hiring for part-time and full-time, right? Servers, serve people. Greeters, greet people. Line cooks, cook people. And then there's a slash that says, <laughs> cook food. <laughs> they, so they cross out the people and they put food. They wrote it yeah. in. Wow. This is so, this is so I, I'm just wondering, like, they still posted this, but they did not like, decide to reprint this. I'm like, what? What makes no sense it's at all? It's 20 more cents to reprint it. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta save the trees. <laughs> this is funny. They didn't even cross it out with a marker. They just slash it with a little they pen. Just, pen. Uh, <laughs> partial slash. You know what? This might not even be, like, this might just be somebody coming in and taking a like. They crossed it out themselves and wrote it in and took the picture, and yeah. not the people that the people put it up probably don't even didn't even realize it. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it's probably funny as hell though. So, <laughs> yeah, that's funny right there. Yeah. All right. So, what is your rant for the week? Okay. So going on to the rant. So, I have one of the worst serving experiences I've ever had at a restaurant, like service experiences. In San Francisco I, or Florida? Sorry. Here in San Francisco. Okay. So. At the ferry building, there's this oyster bar called the, uh, what is it called? Hog Island Oyster Company. Okay. So they, it's an oyster bar, a seafood place. And when you walk by there, even during COVID, like they, I guess dur- during COVID, they have less, uh, less dining, but every, there's a lot more outdoor dining. So then there's always a line, like, always a, a big line going out there during lunchtime or okay. any food time so me and my friends decided to go out there and and try it right so i got out there it's so like, this is a new restaurant by the way no it's not new it's been around for a while um okay. but i don't know it's always a line out there now okay. um during COVID. so um i'm walking i walked over there and then my friends are gonna meet me um, but my friends are always late. So I was like, yeah, I'm gonna wait in line. And then once they get here, we'll all cut, go in together. It'll be fine. So I got in line early and I stood at the same spot in line for 35 minutes, maybe yeah. 40 minutes. I stood in the same spot. Like I didn't move from that spot. Right. So I'm sitting there like pissed off. Like what the hell's going on? I, this is the line to put your name on the list, right? Like, isn't that what this line is? Mm-hmm. And so, so it 40 minutes go by, they come by and they're like, Oh, sorry. Our systems are down. Like our systems just are, are getting rebooted right now. Yeah. There's a bar over there. If you want to get drinks, you can get drinks and bring them back here, but I'm by myself. Right. So I can't even get a drink. I'm just sitting there like, I'm like, man, this line is just to get my name on the list. 
You can't like write my name down. Like, what the fuck is going on? You, know, you mean like with, with like a pen and paper, right? Yeah. Like, what? How <laughs> else? Like, what did you do before you had this machine? Like, what did you do? I was like, you could sit there and write people's name down and let people sit down at least. Let people walk around. Like, like good old fashioned Asian uh, Asian restaurants. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, what? What in the world is going on? So I got so mad, and then my friends showed up. Uh, maybe. 50 minutes after I was uh, standing there. So I was yeah. like, I was hopping mad. Like we, we had like, I went from 40 minutes in one spot and then the next 10 minutes I moved up a little bit and right. maybe I was like four people to the front. So did you complain? No, uh, they got there and I was so mad. I was like, guys, stand in line. I'm going to get coffee. I'm going to go walk around. So I go get coffee on my way back. I get I get back and they're like, oh my god, you're here. We're at the front of the line, <laughs> and they said they won't seat us unless our whole party is here. Okay. So they were they ran around looking for where I was because did, I, all did I did you, was all I did was take one like. When did they just call you? Lap. I don't know. I I don't know. Huh. Maybe they try. I, no, I don't think they texted me or anything. But okay. they were just they just ran around looking for me, and so I got back there, and they were like, okay, can we get a seat outside? And they're like, oh. Yeah. No, they, they told us that they can give us a seat at the Oyster Bar. And there's four of us, so yeah, it's kind of cool. weird being at the bar. And we're like, do, do you have anything outside that we can sit at? And they said, nah, it's going to be 50 to 55 minutes to sit outside. Jesus Christ. And we're like, okay, I guess we'll go sit at the Oyster Bar. So we're walking to the Oyster Bar. As we're walking there, uh, a table opens up. Yeah. So one of my friends goes to the, the person, and he's like, hey, uh, we want to. We'll we'll take this table. Like if yeah. if if it's opened up, we'll take this table. And the guy says, "No, sorry, we already gave it to the people behind you in line." <laughs> behind us in line, they yeah. got that table. Yeah. What happened to fifty five minutes? What the hell happened there? Maybe they're Asians. I don't know. <laughs> what? Like what the hell happened to like? Oh no, it's a fifty minute, fifty five minute wait to get to the to get to your table. To get you a table yeah. outside, and so we went to we went to the oyster bar. We sat down. My friend sat there arguing with them, with the manager and all this stuff. And then we what eventually got a table outside, because um, yeah. he he like argued, and I'm like, I think the whole group of us was mad by of the course. time we sat down, because it was just so ridiculous. Yeah. And then they kept on like lying to us, like they. They were like, they were like, oh no, these are reserved seating. But I, when I was sitting in line for forty minutes, I was looking for reservations. So that maybe I can go reserve a seat. On their website, the first thing that says is no reservations, first come first serve. Of course, yeah. But yeah, when they when we go to the front of the line, they're like, no, no, these are reserved. For what? You're like, for what though? These are reserved, reserved and no, I wasn't there when they were talking. This, my friend yeah. was talking to them, and he's like, oh no, this yeah. is these are reserved. And so I told him, I was like, nah, they said no reservation. So they're just uh, fucking lying to us. They're, <laughs> every, everything took forever. They were, it was just the worst experience I've ever had. I wouldn't stay there the restaurant. Why'd you stay there though, in the first place? My friend really wanted to try it. I was Okay, how was the food? The food was all right, right? But it was not good enough. <laughs> it was not good enough to ever come back. And did, you guys give a, did you give a Google review yet? No, I don't have any. You want, you want to do it with your... Um, with your, with your stupid with your uh the yelp yelp elite thing i don't i haven't been a elite yelp for like past four years already so three um, years now yeah yeah you should just i don't know it's it was the worst experience anybody who wants to go to hog island oyster company should not they should just not go it's just horrible you, you should leave a google review man so it's the worst yeah. experience i've had at a restaurant it's that crazy. is funny as hell <laughs> I guess for San Francisco, I'm very surprised, especially in that area. Let's be honest. Yeah. I'm surprised in general that a, that a restaurant can operate like this and not be like a shitty like hole in the wall. Oh well, I've seen it happen in actually, believe it or not, high class restaurant all the time. That situation happened. Like, um, I have plenty of stories, but I'm not gonna get into it. But I I, I do understand, especially but the things that the, the fact that it's happening, and they don't realize that. It's, they don't re they don't admit it like they don't admit that what they're There's doing no fault that's the worst on part them. it's yeah. just that's the worst part sorry like no we re like we reserved these tables for the people behind you in line after we told you it was a 50 minute wait i was like what the fuck is this 50 minute wait you bitches i fucking <laughs> oh man i wanted to slap the fuck out of those guys it was so bad 
What did the manager say, manager? That was the manager. Oh, wow. <laughs> he, he was talking to the manager. He wasn't even talking to anyone else. Oh, my God. Yeah. Anyway. All right. So my, my rant, it's nothing like that. It's something chill. Not too crazy. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not even sure if it's considered a rant. Let's be honest. So I'm getting ready for my improv show in eight weeks. And, you know, this, I'm a level four improv class. And sometimes, you know, when I go to class, I, I, it's more about, my, 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 I guess, my mental switch when I get into class. So, you know, I get out of work. I'm just, like, sometimes I have a bad day at work when I get angry at my own team or whatever it is. And, so forth. and then I go into improv. And then that's still distracting me in my head. And in improv, you're not supposed to think, right? And it's impacting my class performance. And I, to a certain point, like sometimes I just can't think of a thing on the spot <laughs> to reply back. You can't to, clear your head. I can't clear my head to do, this, to, to do what I need to do in the class. Mm-hmm. And so this past week, it took me like 30 minutes to clear my head to get into the zone when I was in class. Mm. I was like, because we had to memorize, we had to play this game called fa- uh, forward and reverse. And we had to memorize four lines, and then you had to say it f- going forward, and they say it going backward when the scene goes backward. So pretty much think about it like you're fast forwarding a tape and then rewinding a tape. And see mm-hmm. So when you when you rewind, you say your lines backward, mm-hmm. and then you do your acts backward, and then you go forward, and then so whoever you know, the, I guess the conductor said, "Hey, go forward, go forward slow, go f- you know, go backward slow." Dude, I was struggling memorizing my like my four lines <laughs> because of that. <laughs> so I was so mad at myself. I was, I was getting frustrated. Wait, so uh, do you say the lines backwards or you say the words in the lines backwards? You say the words in the line backwards, not like oh, one by one. Oh, dang, yeah. that sucks. That's hard. Yeah. yeah. No, sorry, sorry. Sorry, you say the line backward, like one line at a time backward, not like the whole word. You know? Oh, you don't yeah. you don't just like say a no. sentence and then say that but sentence But the thing is backwards. that though, you got to be able to do the same motion though, backward too. So yeah, if yeah, you do yeah. too much too much of a big motion, you got to keep doing it over again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then there's also a time where the conductor said forward and the two seconds are backward, forward backward forward yeah, so you're yeah. doing the same thing you know like but anyway long story short it's just that it took me a while just to clear my head i was so mad at myself i was like man i need to f- freaking figure out how to clear my head you need to meditate i didn't have time i literally went to class I went to, from work to class right away no but so, uh there's the the mini meditations that you could do the 10 minutes ones yeah the oh. yeah the ones like in between i like, know it's not even 10 minutes it's like a minute no, I think it's like, I think, I thought the 10 minutes, I thought. No, you remember, uh, what's her name? She came on the show. She said in between her meetings, she would have like mini meditation sessions in between her but meetings. But I don't think it was, I don't think it was one minute. No, she says as, as, as little or as long as you need. Like it's not, it's just, mm-hmm. just having it, those spaces. Help. Maybe I need to just swap my calendar between class and meeting, just figure it out how to clear my head. So I don't know. I try to clear my head during the car ride back down there. It, took, it takes about 12 minutes to get there. And then I know they're tending to walk. So tending to 20 minutes right there. I still, I don't know. I guess I was just, that day I just had a rough day at work, I guess, perhaps. Mm-hmm. I just couldn't clear my head. <clears throat> I was just mad. That's all. It happens. It happens. Yeah. And then obviously, like, so our, 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 our teacher's very sarcastically funny. And I'm always late. I'm like, oh, look, so, oh, look who sure just showed up from work. <laughs> you know, classic. Just, Michael I Wong. Mean, late. Yeah. It's just yeah. so classic. <laughs> I, was, I was texting, hey, I'm going to be 12 minutes late. I'm going to be 15 minutes late. I'm uh-huh. going to be 18 minutes late, you know? <laughs> I don't know. But no, nah, she, she, she's hilarious. But um, but yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I just been expressing that the last two classes. I just can't clear my head. I'm just so mad at myself for not doing that. So, hmm. so what are you going to do? How you gonna I don't know. That? Hopefully this doesn't impact when I'm doing the show because it, the show's a Tuesday and I, I, get, I get out of work. So. You got to take the day off. Clear your head the I, whole day. I might take a half day, half day, maybe a half day. Yeah. 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 Do what you got to do, man. Do what you got to <laughs> do. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so uh, that's it for our show for today. So please, if you're listening to us on Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts or watching us on YouTube, leave a comment. Let us know what you think that is this vaccine password be used for or not. Will you even use it? If you have a business, will you even enforce it? So leave a comment below. Please, if you're watching us on YouTube, hit the like button, smash subscribe. that subscribe button. Yeah, subscribe. Yeah. Do, do all of the dilly do's. Yeah. <laughs> on the, don't for, yeah. yeah. Well, don't forget to visit our website, right? www.gfos.com. So, and please 
if you want to hear, you know, come into our episode, let us know. Uh, we would like to have you on, especially if you have a topic in mind, discussion. So we will always welcome anybody on to discuss anything. So yeah, let us know. Yep. Thanks, guys. Bye. Right, until until next time. See you later. Take it easy. Peace. Thanks for joining us for this episode of the Gluten Free Organic Thoughts Podcast. If you are watching us on YouTube, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel, like this episode, and leave us a comment. And as always, you can find us on social media at Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at GFOT Thoughts. Until next time, see you then.